Please welcome to the stage, Smile Executive Director, Sultan Shakir. Thank you. And can we give Monet a round of applause right here? Thank you, Monet, for being amazing. Um, and good afternoon, everybody. It is truly incredible to be back with you today. And I know they were thanked earlier, but I also want to thank the brunch co-chairs, the brunch committee, our amazing sponsors, table leaders, volunteers, silent auction donors, for your incredible support. Because your support here today demonstrates that even after a year away, we have a community of people who are dedicated to supporting LGBTQ youth, so thank you. And we also wouldn't be here today without the incredible and amazing work of the development, communications, and operations staff at SMILE. So please join me in thanking Jason, Sharifa, Hansi, Jesse, and Tim for all of your amazing work. Thank you. In all seriousness, people ask me, oh, what's going to happen at the event? And I say, I don't know, because <laughs> there's an amazing team that plans it. So thank you to everyone who helped make this event what it is today. I'd also like to thank and acknowledge the many partners in this work that work with us to empower LGBTQ youth and recognize a few additional people that I'm proud to work with every day. Today, we're joined by Executive Director of the Wanda Austin Foundation, June Crenshaw, Director of PFLAG National, Brian Bond. ANC Rainbow Caucus Chair, Monica Nemeth. Founder and Executive Director of Aziza Peace, Saran Fawcett. Executive Director of the Gay Men's Chorus, Justin Phelan. Co-Chair of the HRC Board of Directors, Sherry Hughes. Executive Director of Team DC, Brent Miner. With DC Different Drummers, Charles Roth. President of the DuPont Social Club, Juana Seymour. The Smile Young Donors Committee and everyone here who is a Smile Champion. And also, you'll later see a drag queen, Jane Saul. We have Mark Bliss over here. Thank you for donating your time with us. And we also have a new queen here, your former Miss New York, Queen of Miss Adams Morgan 2022, Patina Verdigree. And the team at the Capital Pride Alliance is normally here, but they wanted to let everyone know that right now they are actively working to get the World Pride 2025 bid brought here to DC. They're doing that right now. So please follow them on social media. There's some tweets, there's some hashtags you can do to help bring that amazing event here to DC. So I don't think it's possible to talk about the past year without talking about COVID. Almost every funding application or grant report or panel asks the same question. How has COVID affected you? But I'm not going to talk about that because we know the answer. It sucked. It made it incredibly difficult to plan anything with youth when you're trying to create a stable environment and nothing in the world is stable. It was horrible. But even when nothing was stable, there was one thing that was consistent, and that was all of you the people in the Smile family. And I mean that genuinely and from the bottom of my heart. Your consistency helped us do even more over this past year. Because of your consistency, this past year, the staff and youth leaders at Smile have been able to provide consistent services for LGBTQ youth. Under the direction of our amazing Director of Youth Development and Community Engagement Programming, Adelphi Johnson, this, yay! The staff and youth leaders created our second annual national and even international conference for LGBTQ young leaders called Rise Up, an activist conference for queer and trans youth. And thank you to Ty, who's on staff, and Monet, who you just saw. Young people from around the country were able to connect with each other, but also with youth from Australia, Bangladesh, and Brazil. One of the youth said, Rise Up has opened my eyes to the power that I have right now. And those opportunities for youth are only possible without the support or because of the support of people like you in the room today. So thank you. Your
Your consistency also helped our scholarship program reach a milestone this year. The program helps to support queer and trans young people by providing financial assistance to help young people overcome the financial burden of higher education. This year, we crossed the $100,000 mark in scholarship dollars awarded, thanks to the many donors here today who support SMILE. And I want to thank the founder of that program, Neil Starkey, whose vision and leadership kicked off that amazing program. Thank you, Neil. At SMILE, we're increasingly working to take a holistic look at how we support youth, whether they're in our programs, whether they're in other spaces, or whether they've aged out of our programs. Because we know we can't just create a runway and shoot a 20-something-year-old off into the world with no family support when there's a job loss, no community support when challenges happen because they happen to all of us. For the past three years, SMILE has been working with our partner organizations to build the LGBTQ plus budget coalition here in DC to help advocate for critical funding from DC government, not only for LGBTQ youth, but for job training programs for when our youth become adults, for programs for LGBTQ survivors of domestic violence, and even funding to support LGBTQ seniors and veterans. We know that our youth intersect so many of these spaces and so that's why I'm so pleased to work with the coalition of groups, many of whom I mentioned earlier, to get this work done. And pleased to share that this year, this coalition was able to secure $5 million in new funding from the DC government. And I also want to thank Japer Bowles, who was appointed the Mayor's Director of LGBTQ Affairs for leading that coalition before taking that job. So thank you, Japer. <laughs> and please know that your support helps leverage resources to make a bigger impact on the lives of all LGBTQ people here in the DC area. I also want to talk about the amazing consistency of the housing team. When COVID happened and plenty of people were working from home, the housing team still had to go in. There were concerns about, is it safe to take the metro? Is it safe to take an Uber? But every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year, the housing team showed up to support LGBTQ youth. But they did more than that. As many of you know, most housing programs offer up to two years of support for young people. And in that time, it's time to learn financial literacy, deal with credit issues, find a job, save some money, and also deal with the stress and trauma that led to homelessness in the first place. Our director of housing at the time, Jorge, identified an opportunity. <laughs> identified an opportunity to provide an even deeper level of support for youth whose experiences required more time and more support to reach a point of healing and independence. We quickly and strategically worked on plans to add more in-depth support for our youth. We added a team that could provide more in-depth case management and in-depth programming, and we developed a program that provides six years of support for young people, tripling the time that we have to support young people in their success and their resiliency. The program, now called Roman's House, is named in honor of a youth who is in our housing program. Roman's parents rejected their identity, and Roman expressed never having felt that they were in a space to thrive in an affirming environment before moving here to DC. While Roman was at SMILE, they formed really close relationships with everyone and really honored everyone as an individual. Unfortunately, they struggled with substances. and they refused to get any services related to their substance use. The housing team determined that Ro Roman would have benefited from this new program if it were around. Roman would often travel to New York City. It would normally stay for a weekend or so. During their last trip, we tried continuously to reach Roman since we hadn't heard from them for a few days. After a few weeks, they contacted us and let us know that they would not be returning to DC, and we let them know that we would hold their belongings and keep them safe. 
Unfortunately, a short time later, we received word of Roman's passing from an apparent overdose. We named the new program after Roman in honor of their spirit and their life. Roman's House opened earlier this year, and it provides life-saving support to LGBTQ youth. And I want to thank the entire housing team for your incredible support making this happen. And even after launching that program, Jorge came back to the team and said, we still need to do more. As we looked around at the youth we support, and at ourselves, and at the community, the stress and anxiety of the first year of COVID was visible. There was even a chart-topping song called It's Okay Not To Be Okay. And at times, we weren't okay. So Jorge does what he does best and said, how can we take our expertise and knowledge and do even more? This past year, SMILE also launched another program the, Cl the Smile Clinical Services Department, which provides free, confidential, and culturally competent support to LGBTQ youth in the form of individual counseling, group counseling, trauma-informed yoga, and sound healing for up to 50 youth every week. It's incredibly hard to not only find an affirming therapist, but to find a therapist that one has availability but is also gonna work with LGBTQ youth and find a schedule that fits their life is really, really hard. It's also hard just to navigate how to pay for therapy and healthcare. You worry about insurance. If you're a young person, you worry about whether or not your parent is gonna find out if you're on their insurance. When we were envisioning this new program, we looked at the community for support and partnership to help ensure that there were no barriers to receiving mental or behavioral health support if you come here to SMILE. We know that having a good idea only gets you so far. You need financial resources. And so this year, an organization stepped up to help us with that in the most incredible way. The leadership at the Kiwanis Club of Washington, D.C. selected Jorge's newest idea, the Clinical Services Department, to be their community partner in improving the lives of young people. Their partnership comes with volunteer hours and community support, but it also comes with an impressive $100,000 in multi-year support. And I'd like to invite Stephen, the president of the Kiwanis Club of D.C., to the stage now, along with Jorge. And I know there are some case managers here who actually have a tribute to Roman. If you'd like to come up, please do. Thank you, Horace. It's also my pleasure and honor to share with you that Jorge, for his vision and leadership, helping to ensure that our programs have a strong basis in care and support and in healing, have been named SMILE's first ever Deputy Executive Director. And he's now tasked... Jorge is now tasked with ensuring that all of SMILE's programs are able to work cross-departmentally and holistically to meet the needs of our youth. So thank you to Steven, thank you to Jorge, thank you to Keith, Samantha, for all of your amazing work as case managers in the housing program. Thank you. Team Jorge. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing my job if I also didn't talk about each of you. The great thing about our supporters is when we shared the news about the Kiwanis Club of DC, we also shared the news that we needed to double the amount of money to really run the program at capacity. Almost immediately, a generous family of donors stepped up and offered a $50,000 match to help ensure that we could reach the goal. Today, you'll have the opportunity to help us reach that match, so I want to thank you in advance. And also, I encourage all of you to check out the Kiwanis Club of DC. They're doing work to not only help LGBTQ youth, but youth across the district. Their website is kiwanisdc.org, and you'll receive a text message now with that link. At SMILE, we know there's a lot more that goes into supporting the work in addition to money. 
We need your time, your energy, your passion to overcome the challenges. There's a shortage of mental health professionals. STI rates have increased due to people's concerns about seeking medical care due to COVID or being disconnected from technology and not being able to do virtual visits. Substance abuse is up. And the need to create safe, socially distanced, and ex accessible programming continues. But we know that even during a pandemic, we can not only identify these challenges, but thanks to you, we can work together to meet these challenges. We know that we can continue to do this with your support, and so I wanna thank you for your incredible consistency over this past year. We have an incredibly solid team of staff, of youth leaders, and of volunteers helping us do this work, and your support makes that possible. Thank you.